No, 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 no. Not already. All right, hey guys, time got a time got away from me. Let me make a cup of coffee and I'll start. Okay, welcome to the stream. Um, it almost got away from me. I was like, uh, I'm excavating here inside the dome. And uh, I'm taking it about three inches below finished floor. And uh, all of a sudden I looked at the clock and it said 7.57. I'm like, oh no. <laughs> so... But here we are. Luckily, this is a find a blank piece of paper here. There we go. This is a pretty short, easy one from 2011.
So let's uh, change over to the interactive fiction. And do I have it in here? Yep, okay. Moonwreck.zblorb. And I'm just going to use the regular regular terminal here. Yes, I'm a Storm Super Cylon. I'm a, let's see. Um, I don't know if I, I might be able to find a picture. I'm building an earthship out in the middle of the desert and I'm running on solar. And so I've got a, well, let's see. If I turn this, so, Oh, well, anyway. But anyway, I'm, I'm building our ship. So my living room that I'm sitting in here, as I'm still building it, I'm living in a construction zone. I've got a temporary solar system going. And uh, the walls are uh, tires filled with rammed earth. So the walls are 29-inch thick, 29-inch uh 29 inch wide rammed earth walls and I've got a uh, I've got a concrete dome on the roof for a roof so uh, I've been adding see I was gonna add more cement to the roof today uh, to some thin spots that I got to thicken up before I uh, before I start applying insulation and I'm gonna use pumice creek for uh, insulation on the concrete dome so yeah, I'm out here in the middle of the desert, middle of the high mountain desert, um, with a beautiful view of the mountains and uh, the Milky Way at night, and uh, the closest towns, like uh, 17 miles away, pavements seven miles away. It's pretty nice, but uh, And I know what I want to do for a floor, but I'm not. Sure. It's going to be expensive if I go with flagstone, so I'm still not sure. But I'm uh, excavating it down to like three inches below finished floor. I just couldn't. Uh, I threw a bunch of cement yesterday. I couldn't do it today. I was tired, so I just did a little bit of digging inside. And why was this a Z blorb? Oh, let's uh, make this bigger. Oh boy, here let's let's just start this over again. Open terminal here. Whoops. And let's get this sized. Right. That's pretty good size for text, huh? Whoops. Da, 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 da. And this is from 2011. I'm just going to use. I'm just going to use a regular terminal. Oh, I'd go nuts in a city. Uh, Moonwrecked. Dot uh, Z blorb. All right, so here's how it starts out. Let's see, I got a pen. Please, please hurry. My suit's almost out of air. And you hear in your, uh, you hear in your helmet. And now you say, I'm almost to you. I've just left my buggy at the gate, you described. How in the world did you find these ruins? And he's like, keep going. There's a fountain up ahead. I'm leaning against the side, facing away from you. And then you say, I can see the fountain. I'm approaching you now. And, and you hear, thank you, thank you. I thought I was going to die out here. 
and then you get to the fountains. Uh, there's nothing here. Is are there more fountains? Hello? And the voice in your helmet says, Sucker! Your pressure suit's short-range radio goes dead as the communication dies. Then all you can hear is the sound of your own breathing. So, so we're on the surface of the moon um, near some ruins and someone else was here and they fooled us so and we're in the plaza okay so let's see let's start with the this pen I know I got more pens I'm getting here it is the one that works and so we're in the plaza and there's a fountain here Earthlight sheds a dim glow across the tall spire and broad basin of an empty fountain. The fountain is ringed with recessed lamps, but the lamps are currently off. The tall shadows of the buildings block out the stars in all directions except west and south. You see an empty fountain here. So. So let's, let's see what's to the south. Alright. By the time you make it back to the gate of the mysterious city, you find an unpleasant welcome. Peeling away from the gate in a cloud of moon dust, you see a lunar rover emblazoned with the logo of the Titan Corporation, an exploratory rival to your own employer. Prepare to sprint to your own buggy, only to discover that it has been badly damaged. Someone, likely the man in distress, whom you just tried to save, has taken a plasma welder to your buggy. Its tires and radio are completely destroyed, leaving you stranded in this beautiful but empty ruin and completely unable to contact your co-workers in the Prometheus Corp shuttle floating overhead. You look up at the shuttle, plainly visible in the earthlight, but too far away to stand any chance of seeing you. You turn back toward the retreating form of the rover, barely visible now. Assured now, that you will be stranded here for hours before the shuttle begins to worry about your safety? Titan will report exclusive discovery of this ruin, leaving you and your company in the dust. And so now we're going to be near the gate. And that was to the south. This is the entrance to a mysterious city where you arrived in response to the distress call. There is no pressure dome, leaving the dusty streets exposed to near vacuum. But the buildings have the tall, rectangular shapes familiar to you from the Tokyo skyline. Only the blue marble of the earth high above sheds any light on your surroundings. There is a door, doorless building to the east. A massive gate stands wide open to the south. A waist-high pedestal stands at the center of the gate, apparently preventing it from ever closing. 
there is a tall spotlight nearby, but the spotlight is off. You also see a moon buggy here, empty. All right. So. Oh, wait. <laughs> I overflowed the coffee. So, we found some ruins on the moon. We work for the Prometheus Corporation. And someone from the Titan Corporation also found these ruins on the moon and sabotaged us. So, let's uh, examine Buggy. Your simple but trusty moon buggy is out of commission. Its tires have been utterly slagged under plasma fire. Its rims partially melted and resting in the dust. While the battery ha housing is still intact and the dashboard controls look like they probably work, your saboteur took pains to specifically melt the long range radio transmitter. Examine dashboard. The dashboard is mostly intact, though it looks like your friend from Titan decided to shoot a hole in your radio controls, rendering them as useless as the transmitter. The only thing you could really operate to any effect at this point are the headlights. Well, let's turn them on anyway, right? Okay, is that just... The headlights of the ruined buggy flare to life, casting light into the opening of the building to the east. Alright, we'll be heading to that building to the east, but... Uh, Um, let's check out south real quick. The idea of going after your saboteur is appealing, but futile. He has a buggy you don't. You don't dare explore the lunar terrain without a working long range, long range, long range. <laughs> You don't explore. <laughs> Let me try that again. You don't dare explore the lunar terrain without a working long-range radio transmitter. It's just too dangerous. All right, let's uh, let's see what's going on to the east. Maintenance recess. This building is more like an alcove, hardly big enough to call itself a building at all. For all that it has three walls and a doorway leading back outside. Your buggy's bright headlights are visible through the doorway to the west. There is a control panel mounted to the back of the wall. In the dim radiance cast by the buggy's headlights, you can make out three switches on the panel. The switches are labeled gate, plaza, and residential. Well, um, push residential switch. You flip the switch to provide power 
to the residential area. Okay. Push uh, plaza switch. Oh, okay. As you flip the switch to provide power to the plaza, the residential power switch clicks off. So we can only power one thing at a time. Oh, there's Let's Play on Linux. Hi there. So, um, So let's go ahead and push the residential switch. Because we'll explore that. <laughs> what did I do? Oh, I see what I did. I added an S. Alright, so we got... We got some light in the residential section. So now we'll head west. And we're back to the entrance of the mysterious city that we found on the moon. So what's going on so far is uh, we work we work for Prometheus Corp. Um, we heard a distress we heard a distress call, and. Uh, It was someone from the Titan Corporation that tricked us and sabotaged us here so that they could report the discovery of this uh, ruined city on the moon before Prometheus Corporation um, got to announce it. So, Spotlights off to the north and west. Okay, so now we're near the gate. And there's a um, where does oh to the north and west you glimpse a yellow glow. There's a doorless building to the east, a massive gate. Okay, so we now have a west. West is a west wasn't an option before because it was all dark. All we had was the earth light. Since we're on the moon, we can see by earth light. So let's go ahead and see what's to the west. I better write down that the moon buggy. So right now our map has uh, three rooms on it, and we're going to a fourth. What? You try a door to the west and find it locked. Oh, wait a minute. So we're still near the... Okay. So I guess we can't go west. So let's go back to the uh, north, to the fountain. That's weird. So tall shadows of building blocks out. So we haven't, let's try going west from here. Oh, okay, that takes us to residential. Rows of elegantly designed but otherwise Spartan buildings line this road. The lack of any furnishings, vehicles, or signage increases the eerily sparse feel of the place. 
and see a box. Okay, let's examine the box. A cardboard box lies on its side on the ground here. Broken ceramic spills from its opening. Examine ceramic. Well, let's see. Let's try south. You try a door to the south, but find it locked. Let's try north. Okay, let's try west. I don't think. Oh, wow. Okay. So I've got to. I'm going to head back to near the gate. Oh, examine. Crockery, not ceramic. Okay, it's all, it all seems to be broken. So let's go east, back to the plaza. And go... S all right, so now we're near the gate, and we tried west. Let's try southwest. Let's try Northwest. Hmm. So all those are... Alright, go back to the... See what happens here. Let's see if we can go north of the plaza. No. You try one of the doors. Let's try east. So all these doors are locked. Hmm. All right, let's see. I've played this a long time ago. Examine crockery. So they're all broken. Well, how do I unlock? Let's see my inventory. I'm all I have is a pressure suit. I've tried every direction. Was there an up or a down? Nope. <laughs> Digging into the floor is beyond your ability. Huh. Oh. Okay, the box isn't something you can open. Get. Crock. See, this is, so that's why I was confused. This is almost a bug. Well, actually, probably not, because... Oops. Oh, it's not, it's gonna, not going to let me scroll up. Yikes. 
No, 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 don't do that. Because <laughs> I tried open box, and I tried, you know, and it says that's not something you open. And then when I type get crockery, you open the box, immediately prompting a small avalanche of broken dishware. Delicately pawning through the rubble, you're able to find only a single intact dish. You pick it up. All right, so get the dish. Okay, I already have that. So, and where are we at? Residential quarters. So we want to go back to the east, and we're here at the fountain. South, and we're back near the gate, and we'll go east again, and we're back into maintenance recess. So, <laughs> um, press um, plaza switch. All right, so as you flip the switch to provide power to the plaza, the residential power switch clicks off. So evidently, this ancient, this, these ancient ruins still have some power, but uh, it can only power one section at a time. So if we go west and north, back to the fountain, a silvery highly reflective liquid rises from the top of the fountain and flows down into the basin. The recessed, the recessed lamps produce a penelope of delicate rainbow lights that dance softly around the plaza. The tall shadows of buildings block out the stars in all directions except west and south. You can see a fountain in which is falling a stream of mercury here. So, I didn't realize this was this short. I thought it was a little bit longer than this. So, I'm going to take a few minutes and uh, here I'll show you my inventory. We have a china dish, and we've got a fountain, and if you've, uh, so does anyone have an, so does anyone here in the chat, before I give this away, have any idea on what to do here? And see the fountain, since we're on the moon, the uh, fountain's full of mercury instead of water. So I'll just give it a few minutes. Oh, what was that other band that I think had members of suicidal tendencies in it? Was it Infectious Grooves? Those were pretty good. Infectious Grooves, I think, was the other that had like some members. There had some relation to suicidal tendencies. I can't remember. So I'm not seeing any ideas. Boy, I haven't, I haven't listened to any of those bands in a long, long time. Probably maybe 15 years or something. Wow. All right, no one seems. Let's. Uh, let's go ahead and do this. 
fill dish with mercury. Uh-huh. Get mercury, so now it's a matter of figuring out the syntax. Dish. I only understand you as far as wanting to get the falling stream. Okay. Put dish, geez, under mercury. Put dish and fountain. Oh, this is. Yes, that worked. The bane of text adventure games. Even if you un even if you know what you're trying to do, trying to tell the game how to do it. And this one seems to be especially weird on that. Right. So that worked. You hold the china dish underneath the silvery stream. Within a few moments, the concave recess of the dish is filled with the heavy shining fluid. So now we've got a dish full of shiny mercury. So I would hope you guys would know what to do next. And this was just one a long time ago that I, uh, I grabbed at random. And I kind of liked it that it was short and easy and didn't take days. Um, yeah, there's like four places. The map is a whole four squares big. So now we're going to go. Now we're going to go back to the gate. And this is the entrance to the mysterious city. All right. A massive gate stands wide open to the south. A waist-high pedestal stands at the center of the gate, apparently preventing it from ever closing. There is a tall spotlight nearby, but the spotlight is off. Um... So basically, so you you figure, so what's the next two things we got to do, Mitchell? So we got like two things left to do, and this game's over. You got it figured out yet? I've seen the Scottalites two or three times, and uh, the first time I saw them, it was still the uh, the bass player. It was still the original drummer. And the original bass player, and wow, it was it was uh, it was a lot more special seeing the original drummer and the original bass player of the Scottalites. And I saw him after that. I think the bass player died, so I think the original drummer was the only one still left. But boy, when uh, when they when they still had the original bass player and drummer team. Not that the Scottalites aren't good now, but wow, they were really good then. That was 20 years ago. I saw them in Taos, so. And uh, I don't think I don't think it was that long after that the bass player died. All right, so inventory. The moon buggy's not the only the on, the moon buggy's destroyed. The only thing we needed that moon buggy for was to light up the maintenance room so that we could see the switches for the for three different sections that we can power up. So I'm going to put dish on pedestal. 
you know, I think the first time, the first time I played this, I think I, uh, and it's been, it took me a couple hours. Okay, we're going to put the dish on the pedestal. What? I missed, all right, how do we spell pedestal? <laughs> I don't, pedestal, uh-huh. You carefully set the china dish on the pedestal. See, there's a, uh, we've got the Prometheus shuttle up, up here over our heads. But our radio's out, so we don't have no way to contact them. So where are we at now? We're near the gate. So now let's go back east. And let's uh, press gate switch. A bright light comes on from behind you where you left your buggy. And so let's go back west to the, the gate. And here... I guess we'll just... Uh, this is the entrance to the mysterious city where you arrived in response to the d distress call. All right. This is the end of this game, but I'm going to ramble on a little bit. But let's see where we're at now. There's a doorless building to the east, illuminated dimly by your buggy's headlights. So yeah, the only thing the buggy's capable of doing is lighting up the maintenance building to the east. Now here we go. A bright spotlight lances down upon the waist-high pedestal standing in the center of the gate. The light reflects immediately from the mirror-like surface and spears up into space towards your waiting shuttle. On the pedestal is a china dish, in which is a pool of mercury. You also see a moon buggy here. Walking toward the gate. Hey, now. Get the cord up. No, no. No, no. There's the Nako chan She's decided it's time to come attach, attack my headphone cord. Yep, she's getting rough. <laughs> she's starting to bite hard when she plays now. I'm like, whoa. She was so gentle before. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's a real quick, super easy one. Walking toward the gate, you see that the beam of light um, from the powerful spotlight reflects off the dish of the silvery liquid and up to your waiting ship. You hold your breath with nervous anticipation as you see the spotlight's beam, unimpeded by the thin atmosphere, reach the far distant Prometheus Corp shuttle. After a few seconds, you jostle the china dish, making the surface of the silvery liquid ripple and split the beam of light. You repeat this pattern for several minutes, a sick feeling slowly dawning on you that your attempt will fail. Just as you are about to lose hope, however, you see the shuttle fire a jet, changing its position. Your heart hammers in your chest as the shuttle maneuvers and you have to resist crying out with joy as you see it release its spare buggy towards the surface of the moon. It's not too late after all and those titan bastards should have known you wouldn't give up without a fight. So yeah, you basically using the bowl of mercury like a mirror to uh, signal the airplane that, that I mean the shuttle up there <laughs> Yeah, that's really the end of the game. It's that short and easy. And it was just... It was just something that I... Uh, found and played a few years ago. And like I said, Enchanter... Enchanter's a beast. And I just... 
yeah, so it's real short and easy. Um, would I do it in probably 40 minutes this time? Um, I think it took me two hours the first time. And, and most of the problems are just syntax, trying to figure out the syntax. And, uh, yeah, it's that. So anyway, about these games, um, let's go back to, go back to here. If we hit here, browse, there's tons of these. Um, and let's uh, change this to uh, highest, highest rated first. And there's just, there's tons of them. And not all of them. Some of them are G blorbs or, or, uh, or, or use Glux instead of Z machine. And for those, you have to use Gargoyle. Frots doesn't, uh, Frots doesn't do those. But So some of these newer ones, some of these newer ones take... Uh, and I don't think I've, I don't think I've played any of these, but you know, I just, some every it's been, ow, it's been a while. <laughs> but you know, I've just I've just come through. Um, I did play the original adventure and uh, Stormtrooper Cylon that, that that other game you was asking me about um, Hydrin or something like that was was that a text adventure that other game you asked me if I played before because I'm Where did you see that? Maybe. Okay, Hydrax, not a text adventure. Because there was another one. I was wondering about that. Because there was one... I, there was a text adventure. I don't remember the name of it. It wasn't Colossal Cave Adventure. It was another one. And it had a... It had a picture of a dragon. Oh yeah, there's a ton of these. Alright, before I sorted it. Alright, so... Newest listing first. I think is where we start. Roberta Williams. The Dark Crystal. And it's The Dark Crystal. A fantasy from 1983. I wonder if this is a... We can download. There's a download for the Apple II version of this. So yeah, this is another old one. I didn't know this existed. This is from way back from 1983 and you can you can download the Apple II version. I wonder if there's some kind of file that you can just throw in an interpreter or if you'd like have to use an Apple II emulator. But wow, it's based on the Dark Crystal. How many stars does it get? There's no reviews on it yet, so it don't have any stars. That's weird. And there's... But, yeah. And it's from 1983, wow. So evidently not... <laughs> Evidently, people didn't know about this back then either. I've never heard of it.
and the last time I went through this list, um, let's go back to uh, highest rated. And we're on page three. Ah, so that must have been, uh, so, it, yeah, it must have been, uh, well, it, must, it would have obviously been before King's Quest, 1983. So it's something before the graphics adventures. That might be interesting to, uh, that might be interesting to check out. I'll have to look into that. I'm going to write that down, actually. I'm not, that could be another interesting one. Jesus. Dark. And somewhere in here, but yeah, there's just, there's tons of these. Um, some of them, like here, 2019. And I don't know. I, I've only looked at a few of them. But, uh, what? And, we're still in the five star reviews. So, yeah, that, uh, that Dark Crystal. Might be, and it looks like someone just. And what's interesting is it's an old game, but. Someone just put it on the Interactive Fiction database. It has not been. So. So even though it's an old game, um, it hasn't been on the Interact. It hasn't been on the Interactive Fiction database for very long. Um, the, all the old the text adventure games were pretty convoluted a lot of going back and forth but that's interesting that is interesting I might as well go ahead and just download that now save it worst case scenario I gotta like whoops, put it in Lutris and run run an Apple II emulator um, but uh, let's see um, oh heck what's his name that does spite Andrew Plotkin just This guy, the ones that I have played of this guy, Andrew Plotkin, being in, um, have been pretty good. Um, 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 um. I've played a I've played A Change in the Weather. I think I've played Cold Iron. I've started Dreamhold, but I didn't get that far into it. I think I've... But where's the one I'm looking for? That's really good. Um, Spider and Web. This one right here. By Andrew Plotkin. I might do this one one of these days. Yeah, he's really good at these, and this is an older one of his, but it's uh, it's really good. You're kind of uh, it's warped. You're being interrogated, and uh, it's just, and that was the winner of the best game of the 
1998 XYZZY Awards. First place in 2011, it's the first place in the top 50 of all time. And it, uh, as of 2019, it was fourth place in the top 50 of all time. Most of them are free. And the ones that um, for most of these you just need a Z machine interpreter and uh, there's Z machine interpreters for everything or you might need a Glux interpreter if a Z machine interpreter don't work let's like let's look at what we got here um, So this is Tangle Z5. So Z, so it's still it's, it just takes Z machine. Um, so just frots, and like I said, there's frots. Frots is available for. So yeah, this one just runs in frots. Let's see. Uh, um, heck, what was the name of that one? Oh, Andromeda Apocalypse. Like, let's look that one up. And uh, I'll put this. Uh... Okay, so this one here. If we puck, if we pull this one up we'll see that what do we have story file for all systems to play you'll need a glux interpreter and so frots not frots won't work on this one um and you need a glux interpreter so for this one um you need to use gargoyle basically um there's probably other glux interpreters and uh, as far as a uh, as far as Ubuntu or Ubuntu based, it would be whoops, sudo apt install gargoyle dash free. And I'm already and so. If we pull up, uh, if we pull up Gargoyle and go to where's my interactive fiction? There it is. See, it's a G blurb and. And we have gargoyle here. And so, boom, boom, boom. So yeah, frots won't do that one. But frots, most of these, just regular old frots works. And the thing, I got chastised in the comments that I was using frots in the terminal instead of, instead of, uh, instead of the GUI app gargoyle. Well, gargoyle is a GUI app, but, you know, there's no menu here. You're stuck with, and you can... You can, uh, I'd rather use the terminal. And you can change all this stuff, but you gotta look, you gotta find the file. We're gonna check the whole, um, so you have to look for, here we are. You have to look for this, you have to look for this file here. And you have to edit the configuration to change anything you've got to actually edit a text file and so you can you can you can change you can change colors and fonts but it's not easy whereas in the terminal in the um, in the terminal emulator you could do um, 
it's just easy. You got you got GUI menus to change. So to me, I don't the terminals way you because gargoyle just so I avoid gargoyle if I can. If I do end up having to use gargoyle, I'll go into this text file and I'll I'll set it up. But spider and web. So yeah, this gar I mean, it's nice that you just run gargoyle and load and load your game and play it. But if you want to change fonts or change the size of anything, you got to muck around. You got to find that file or put it or if you don't and and just I'm not a big fan of gargoyle. But for for the stuff that's not in Z machine, it's it's essential. And of course, it's all, you know, gargoyles available on Windows. Gargoyles available on Frots. Um, as a matter of fact, um, this is neat. As f Is this where I put the links? Now I'm in the small room. Oh, shush. Because I came from the chairman's office. Instead of a... I'm just looking for... This is the easiest way to find this link. Come on. Oh. Back. Yeah. Right? Oh my goodness. And I if I don't mess up. Show more. Um there we look. So you know, we got Amiga Frots. Frots for Palm OS handhelds. Um, dumb frots. Um, let's see. So here we are. Um, DS frots. Frots for the Nintendo DS. And so yeah, there's frots. Frots for Mass OX 10.12 or higher. Frots version 2.43 for Arch Linux. Red Hat Linux. And of course. It's probably in your repo, so you could just like here in Ubuntu sudo apt install frots. I'm gonna, I'll, sh I'll show you. Um, it's dusty as hell, but it was a custom. It's a custom trackball. I'll be right back. This thing's so full of dust, I'm gonna be embarrassed, but. Cause it's just been, it's just been sitting on a shelf for probably a year now. So. Pardon the dust. Oh my god, it's filthy. I gotta clean this thing up. Whoa, whoa, whoa. So anyway, this thing... Oh my god, it's filthy. This thing's been sitting on a shelf. I'm. It looks terrible, but it's a. Uh, it's this trackball I made. I used a amethyst gemstone, and I've got this little joystick here. It does two speed. 
um, vertical scrolling and one speed horizontal scrolling and these are Saimitsu arcade machine buttons and that's an Apple mouse sensor that I've uh, used silicone nitride balls and it was just something and I made a Panther XL I've actually uh, I've actually got a uh, I've got a video about this and uh, there's this little teensy plus plus I've got some videos about this thing on my channel and uh, since I don't I don't actually write code it took me it took me a while to figure out how to get the uh, scrolling it, it took me a while to figure out how to get this thing to all work but it all works and it was more of a uh, it was more of an engineering exercise and like I said, it was an old, ancient, used Apple mouse. And it was a used $20. The, the, the Samitsu arcade machine buttons are new. But that was it. And that first, it doesn't, the, uh, the mouse sensor doesn't really like tracking the amethyst ball. And you have to have the, uh, the height of it above that sensor just right. So I learned a few things. And I'd like to... Uh, I'd like to do it again, but use all new parts and uh, have it not be such a hack job. But there's this little, but I used a uh, Teensy Plus Plus, which is kind of like an Arduino. It actually, uh, you actually even program it with the Arduino software. But I really like, and if you call, if you're using it as a mouse and not a joystick that little you know that's just right there at your thumb for your horizontal and vertical scrolling and I was really proud of that the, the little scroll joystick but I I'd like to now that I've proven to myself this was just can I do this and I've proven to myself that I I can figure it out um, I'd like to get all new parts because like okay the only thing that was new on this thing was the teensy plus plus board the, the arcade machine button and I got uh, the amethyst ball was a gift and the rest of us just used stuff the uh, the joystick I got twenty dollars at a thrift store and uh, some of the buttons didn't work which is why I took it apart to begin with and at that point um, so I'd like to get like a good mouse sensor I got the old I got the an old Apple mouse at the computer shop for a couple bucks. So I'd like to uh, do it again with new components. Maybe even a Hall Effect joystick would be cool. Yeah, I still, I don't, I have hated, I don't use a mouse. I've got a mouse sitting over here. I've got a mouse sitting to the left of my keyboard, and all I use it for is it's got a, because it's just, this Logitech mouse I'm using, there's a it don't have a scroll wheel, so I've just got a I've got a mouse sitting to the left of my keyboard, <laughs> just for the scroll, just for the scroll wheel, and I actually, I mean, this thing's this thing's not ter you know these aren't terrible, beats the hell out of a mouse, the buttons. The buttons are in a ridiculous, but the buttons are in a ridiculous position. Where, and even this, one of the, something else, like even here, the idea was the buttons, when you're using the mouse, is right at your fingertips. And what I've discovered after using it is uh, the buttons are too close. The buttons need to be further away because it's like you know if you got the trackball here so the buttons need to move up about an inch to actually be under your fingertips when you're palming the ball and so that's another thing I would do is I may I put those buttons I put those buttons too close to the trackball but they're supposed to be right there right there under your fingertips and then source and then you got your scroll stick here 
And if you're doing a joystick, you got your left hand, you got your left hand on the mouse, and so you got these two thumb buttons, and then you got your joystick. And uh, I patterned it after an old joystick that was called the Panther XL that they quit making around 1998. And so it was a neat little project. And uh, one of these days I'll redo it. And I'll get an actual trackball ball that tracks good. Um, and I'm going to have to... Uh, I also need a way to adjust the height really real easy. But I do have a I do have a few videos on it. And yeah, it's just a custom trackball with a nice with a a nice big ball compared to you know compared to these newfangled cheap track man. There's just for anything for, for a nice trackball, it's over a hundred bucks for a nice trackball. So I was like, well hell, if I'm gonna spend that much I'm just going to make my own, and I learned a lot, and it was a cool project, <laughs> but I'm going to go, oh my goodness, I'm going to go put this thing back on the dusty shelf, this poor thing, but it was, it was, it wasn't really meant to be a, a, a finished item, it was just more of an engineering ex exercise, can I do this, and like I said, it's pretty much a bunch of used parts so if I want to do it again and do it like more proper and you know the reason two of the reasons I the track the actual ball I uh, I tried to adjust it to get better tracking and I made it worse and uh, it's just so big so I want to do it and I also want to, so I want to do it again twice. I want to make just a trackball without the joystick attached. And then make another one of these. But. But yeah, there's a few there's a few videos on my channel before I messed up the uh, before I messed up the tracking on the trackball, trying to get better tracking on it. I was actually playing uh, Jedi Academy with it, and Jedi Academy was the game I was playing to uh, test it out on. But I don't have any way of adjusting the height of the ball. And so I'd have to pop. I'm building, you know, when we started. I'm building off-grid house in the middle of the high mountain desert, which is another reason um, that got put to the wayside. But yeah, that's great. And uh, man, I'll show you something else that the parts availability right now you can't get a motherboard right now and, and I had the money for a motherboard for about three or four weeks now I just I, I don't have the money for a motherboard right now but there's just hasn't been anything available but let me grab this thing I do want something better than a Pentium laptop. And so I got a Cooler Master, one of those cheap Cooler Master cases that they call Master Ovens. And like I said, there's a parts availability right now, just stinks. But since they call this thing a Master Oven, I, I modded it. I cut the I cut the whole the fan holes in the back, and I even cut out 
or, and I even cut the fan hole out in the in the back just stop that restriction because there's a bunch of reviews on this case that say it's a great case and then there's other reviews that call these uh, cheap cooler masters master oven so I got this case and they're just there's just nothing available there just isn't anything available you can get it like a one of the motherboards I was looking out it's a seventy dollar it's a seventy dollar motherboard out of stock but you can buy a used one for over a hundred bucks so when are the parts going to be available again it's like when are the parts going to be available again so this is just sitting in the box because uh I was looking at, you know, laptops with, uh, I was looking at laptops that had video cards in them, and you're talking a minimum of 800 bucks, and then with, you know, and I was just, man, you know what, I remember why I don't like laptops, I'm going to build a tower, just for, I'll have something that I, that's upgradable, and, and then just motherboards just have not been available, so, but I just couldn't see spending like eight hundred to twelve hundred dollars on a gaming laptop, and then you can't even really upgrade the thing. You're just stuck with it. So, so I got I started to build a computer, and now you can't get motherboards. Yeah, it's just like what the heck. I think yeah this is like so I don't know the the processors seem to be available and they're not they're not outrageously uh, they're not outrageously priced I was probably gonna start out with the Ryzen um, right now where I'm sitting in now is a 20 foot diameter um, a 20 foot diameter circle and it's gonna be my it's round and it's gonna be my living room and uh, I don't know if I have any pictures on this machine and then I've got a I've got a U started over into the next room that's gonna be the kitchen Right now, this is everything, and it's I'm living in a construction zone. It's lots of fun. <laughs> Not really, but... Um, shit, I think I just got the roof. The roof was... I just, the roof was a, I just got the roof uh, as a complete shell the end of last year. So right now... But then it's going to have another room another room to the uh, to the west that's going to be kitchen systems bathroom and then I'm going to have a uh, shop that I haven't started pounding tires on that but I have um, and it's like a the shop is just smaller just just a little bit smaller than a two car garage but the way it's set up it's set up for one car to come in and the rest is shop but uh, but uh, so it's just it goes slow. I'm out here working it by myself, out of pocket, no loan. No, the bank does not own anything here. It's all mine. Cause it's and but it goes, but it goes real slow doing it that way. So so it'll be. It'll be this living room, kitchen and systems room, and a shop. It'll just be those three. I didn't, uh, I actually drew out a, a drawing of it, but I don't think it's here on this machine. But, so maybe one of my kids will want it when I die. Maybe like something I can do for them. 
because uh, I don't know. Things happened, and I don't really know my kids, but life things in life happened, and me and my old lady didn't get along well, and the kids suffered, and that sucks. But, well, the kids didn't suffer, actually. She did a good job. She actually did a good job of raising them. They're not hoodlums, but... So, and, uh, yeah, it never goes according to plan. So, yeah, I'm just sitting out here. I own, I own land and part of a house, you know. I'm like 52 years old, so I figure I got another, I currently got another 20 years to piddle around on it. <laughs> I mean, I, I think, I, I'm pretty sure I'll at least make it to 70. I don't know how far after that I'll get. But, but uh, yeah, this living room. Uh, now that this roof is squared away enough, I'm finally, I'll finally start on the interior. I'll finally start on the interior of this room and, And of course, right now, if I did have a tower right now, instead of a laptop, I'd have to upgrade my solar system. But uh, I think I have enough solar panel. I think I just need more batteries. And man, solar panels are so cheap right now. There's a, uh, in town, there's a uh, wholesaler. And they had uh, 230 watt solar panels for fifty dollars each, and the pa and uh, maximum power point charge controllers for like 150 dollars, and not uh, 60 amp maximum power point charge controllers for 150 dollars. It's like oh my god! It's like straight up the guy. He buys he buy he buys he, he buys uh, warehouses. Um, trailer loads. He like just buys huge amounts of stuff and wholesales them out. This guy in town sells them all over the country, but he's right here in town, and so you can just walk in and get this stuff straight at wholesale. And solar, solar is cheap right now. I have a dog and a cat. Well, I have a dog and a kitten. Um. It's a mutt. The cat's a mutt too, I guess. There's Mesa mutts. But it's a good dog. He's a good dog. But it does... You know what? I don't know where she is right now. She's uh Nico, Nico. Meow, meow. There she is. Boy, kitties are neat. Come on, Nico. From one minute, one minute they're like laying on your lap all sweet and licking you. Two minutes later, they want to play and they're biting the crap out of you. Yeah, but you're a good kitty, huh? Still scared of the dog. It was funny today because uh, she tried to get over. She start, she started running up to the dog, and 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 all of a sudden her tail. Her tail puffed up. She changed her mind in the middle of running at the dog, and her tail puffed up, and she jumped the other, just total 180, changed directions at the same time. It was funny. And he's a good dog. He don't, he's not going to, he's not going to hurt the kitty. He'll, he'll, he has growled at her, but I think that's when he's, it's usually when he's over, when she's over by his, uh, by his food dish. His name's Scrappy. Scrappy Deppy Doo! Um, 
And that was just because uh, the old Scooby-Doo cartoons, and then they had the Scrappy-Doo. Well, when he's not the right color, but when he was a little puppy, he had this giant chest and that little tie-in, that little, little itty-bitty hind end. And so he's like, wow, he looks like the cartoon dog Scrappy-Doo when he was a little puppy. Scrappy, come here. Yeah, he was a good boy, huh? I think he's like six years old now. And now that he's grown up, you can still see that his front end is a little bit bigger than his back end. But it's not, but when it was a little itty bitty puppy that could fit in the palm of your hand, it was, it was real obvious that his, that his chest was real, real big compared to his back half. Yeah. But I don't know, but, but <laughs> well, I don't drink near as much coffee when I'm not just reading text all night long. I'm usually at the end of the streams, I'm like, ah, <laughs> my mouth starts to get tired. You know what? I got, I almost quit. I almost didn't. I got to the point where I didn't care about computers. Um, trying to run old games. I mean, just trying to do anything on XP, and I liked XP. And it was the last Windows I used, and I didn't even care if I had a computer anymore. And then uh, um, a friend of mine died, and um. His son wanted me to get a video off of his laptop. And I was like, okay, I'll see what I can do. And it was, uh, it was running, uh, it was running, running Linux Mint with XFCE. And so I, I was like, so this is Linux, huh? Because, you know, I knew Linux existed, but I didn't know. And I, I think I did know there was a GUI. I don't think I had this misconception that everything was in the command line but once I had that once I had that Linux laptop in my hand that had uh, Mint XFCE on it and I started looking around and it's like okay this does and I'm like well hell this is what I wanted Windows XP to be but it wasn't it's just like and I actually wanted a computer again because I don't know. I don't know how people get along with Windows. I really don't. Me and Windows, it feels, it felt like you went to go to battle with your computer every time you turned the thing on. And I just got tired of going to battle with my operating system just to use my computer. And, you know, there was some learning, you know, there was some, it wasn't completely seamless, but, I didn't have computer problems no more, and it's been great. You know, I had some hiccups, but nothing major. And I didn't even, you know, I didn't even care about playing games at first. I just wanted to, you know, I needed to read PDFs and, and use the browser, basically. And so, hey, you know, just <laughs> overkill for that. You know, and then when I started, okay, let's... When I finally did um, try to play some games, um, and I, at first I just tried to play really old stuff because it's a Pentium laptop, but, but that's what it was. I got a, uh, I had in my hands a machine that had Mint XFCE on it, and that would have probably been. eight years ago because uh, it was an old it was an old version of Mint and so I looked 
and I don't know why. I can't. It was eight years ago. I don't know why, but when I went looking around on the internet, instead of downloading Mint XFCE, I ended up downloading Zubuntu. And I think it was a. I think I had. I think I had figured out the. You know, I want that desktop. And you start looking around on the internet and exploring this stuff. And whatever version of Mint that was on that computer, it was way outdated. It was an old version of Mint. And so I started with uh, Zubuntu 12.04. And then uh, back then, a lot, you know, Zubuntu was a lot smaller ISO than the uh, than vanilla Ubuntu. And there was a there was a couple we're talking, you know, some growing pains. There was a couple things that were supposed to work in Ubuntu, but for some reason in Zubuntu is like it didn't work. And it's like okay. So now I have to figure out what packages are missing. And Zub why is this not working? What package does Ubuntu have that Zubuntu don't have? So for the 1404 cycle, I uh, I loaded up uh, Ubuntu proper. I used Unity for a couple days. I say like, I don't. And my first impression of Unity, and obviously. That impression didn't last. Here's Unity on my desktop right now. But my first impression of Unity, it was like, I was like, this is this is like a phone OS. If I wanted a phone OS, I'd buy a phone or a tablet. <laughs> and so I immediately installed XFCE on standard Ubuntu. So... And then uh, on 1604, when 1604 came out, I made myself live. In, I made myself stay in Unity for two weeks. And after I made myself stay in it for two weeks, I I got it. It's like okay, I do like this. But just using it for a couple days, I was like, man, I hate this. And went back to XFCE. And then Ubuntu dropped. <laughs> Ubuntu dropped Unity. And so for the 1804 cycle, I'm back on Zubuntu. And I'm still on Zubuntu here on the 20.04 cycle, but it's like, uh, it's because of DT. DT did a video where um, we were still, it's about a, it was the day, it was about the, it was, I think it was the day that they had the feature freeze about a month before 20.04 release. And DT did some video and he installed Unity Desktop on the uh, Ubuntu beta. And so, so originally on this laptop, I loaded up Ubuntu vanilla, and this Pinium laptop just does not like Ubuntu vanilla. And it just chugged, it was slow and chugged. So I put a Zubuntu, I went back to Zubuntu 20.04 and put Unity I put Unity on Zubuntu, and it's just, every now and then, it's not exactly snappy, but, but, uh, I haven't been in XFCE long enough to theme it, <laughs> but, uh, and, uh, this feature here, where you, where at the hot corner, where the window spread, a lot of times I'll turn that, I'll turn that off. Because on on some games you just out, you'll like the Shadow Run games for, for for instance or any like real time strategy game, all you're in the middle of the game and all of a sudden the window spread comes up. So I I like turn that off a lot of the times. But and of course, um, I've got the GNOME. I do have the GNOME Classic menu installed, but uh, I don't use it. I mean it's just. Um, type a couple letters, hit enter, you know, hit them. So, I've just gotten used to hitting the window keys, the first two or three letters of the app, enter, boom. So, and since it is Zubuntu, if I, when I get tired, if or when I get tired of Unity, 
and just uh, log into a, a Zubuntu session. So, and I had act actually uh, during that video, I still had two computers because I also had an i5. That was a that was a help that was a lot more expensive than this Dell laptop new. And that i5, it it died. The i5 died. I don't have that computer anymore. And so I just have this Pentium. But and so I was just playing. I was just playing around on this. My you know my i5 was the one I was using all the time. And so I did that. You know. So I put Zubuntu 20.04 with the uh, and installed Unity Desktop on it a month before the actual release. And it's been going on this Pentium ever since. And when the i5 did die, I upgraded the Pentium to 16 gigs of RAM. And uh, it's got an SSD in it now. So. But. Uh, just. Just nothing but the Mesa driver is getting better over the years this thing it games better than it did before as the, as the, as the mesa drivers and as wine and as everything gets better um well let's just pull up steam like i um i don't have much in, i don't have much installed right now because uh it's a 250 I got it's a 250 gig hard drive but all of these games free space 2 no that don't run well at all in either proton but uh, I use I use nosos for that and uh, I had to build nosos from source code because the PPA for it was abandoned so that was just on here. I can probably I can uninstall this now. I'm pretty sure. But all of these games, um, even the Witcher, the first Witcher on this, like uh, okay, let's uh, hard info. So here's so here's my specs. It's a Pentium. At 1.9 gigahertz, one physical processor, two cores, four threads. So it's not, and with Intel integrated graphics. And so, it's not a gaming machine by any stretch of the imagination. But uh, no, Free Space 2 doesn't. It doesn't work. Um, Proton don't like that. And eduke 32. I should just build it from source code for Linux. But. Uh, Wine wouldn't do it. None of the Lutris runners would run it. It would just crash. But Proton runs it. So I just added a non-Steam game. And Proton runs eduke32 for Duke Nukem. And I should just go ahead and build the Linux version from source. But <laughs> And if we take this off of here. Um, okay. Black Mesa, forget it. It's not working. It's not working on this laptop. Um, Dirt Rally Kane, Elite Dangerous, no, that ain't running on this laptop. It almost ran on the i5. Black Mesa actually did run good on the i5. Um, Fallout New Vegas, this laptop's not good enough for that. But everything else on here. Oh yeah, everything else. Tabletop simulators a bit much. But all this other all this stuff runs All this stuff runs good on this laptop. Except for what you would expect to not run well on it. So Bye Mitchell, have a good night. I've been rambling on. Hell, I've been rambling for an hour here.
and uh, the shadow um, here let's go back Um, the shadow run games that's a lie at playtime 11 minutes is a lie I've played all the way through this game but I usually play offline and half the time when you play offline um, the playtime don't show up but these shadow run games let's go to the store they're cheap they're uh, native Linux So, okay, so, Shadow Run Returns right now, 374. Shadow Run Dragonfall, 374. Um, they, they owe, they're on sale all the time. And uh, Hong Kong, I just got. I haven't played it all the way through yet, but I did play it enough to make sure it runs. And all these are really good turn-based. They're good RPGs. They're really, really good RGPs. They're, they're all native Linux titles. Yeah, see? They all run native and Linux, and they're they're good RPGs. So, uh, so Shadow Run Returns was one of the next ones I was gonna maybe play. Find, uh, pick another day. So yeah, these Shadow Run games are are really good. They're really good turn-based RPGs, and they're cheap. So, and, uh, yeah, all these run good on this Pentium that are on the screen right now. Well, Free Space 2 doesn't run in Proton at all, but Gnosis, Gnosos takes care of that. And I tried to, I tried to figure out how to build a snap of this thing. Oh, now it's going to... But, uh... It's a, uh... So it's a, it's a launcher and mod manager for, uh... for Free Space Open. And so, there's the re retail Free Space 2. But I mostly got it for, uh, so there's all kinds of space combat. And let's, uh, oh, if you go explore, here we are. There's just tons of mods available. And most of these mods, a lot of these mods are for Free Space 2, but some of them are standalone. Some of them are standalone, and so you don't need Free Space 2 for them. So, this would be good. This would be a good one. This is one we need a snap of. I, uh, I attempted to make a, I attempted to make a snap of it. So, right now on Linux, you're looking at, uh, going to the forum and getting instructions on how to build it for Linux on the forum. Because the beep, the the basically the PPA has been a been abandoned. There used to be a PPA. It's been abandoned for it's been abandoned for two years or so. And the version on it's like um, dot thirteen dot something. And so these mods, the way things are now, these these mods, you need you need this version of it. And so right now. You have to build it from source code to uh, to get it working, and I think and I tried to figure out how to build it as a snap, but it's it's a it's 
it's way above my pay grade. And of course, uh, I was actually thinking of uh, Shadow Run Returns. I want to keep the uh, I want to keep the uh, Thursday and Saturday streams old school classic RPGs. So if I fin if I get through Ultima Seven, I was thinking of going to uh, like Fallout One, for instance, where this game where this game is actually. I think from two. Tw oh, come on. Oh, there we go. What's the reason? Oh, 20. See, this one's from 2013. It's not. So it's not. It's it's more. Mo it's it's more modern. It's not like the classic retro. So. So I mean, maybe I'll add a. But you know, right right now, um, when I'm not streaming, I'm not playing. I'm basically, I'm not playing games when I'm not streaming right now. It's like when I, when you see me streaming is pretty much the only time I'm playing games on the computer right now because I'm trying to take advantage of the summertime and uh, I'm moving a lot slower than I used to but I'm taking advantage of the summertime and doing you know piddling around I'm not like I'm not hitting it hard but I'm I'm working on my house why the weather's good and then when the winter time comes and I play I play games more. But uh, I was thinking of adding another. What have I got? See, I'm streaming four days a week right now. So I don't know. I think I think that's enough. But if I added another day or two, it's it'll be uh, Shadow Run returns, and you know. And it's like I said, it's native, Linux native, and all. There's there's a lot of good things about those. But I play the older games more. I just, I just do. <laughs> but I really enjoyed the, uh, I really enjoyed the Shadowrun series. So I I do want to make some more videos on. Uh, Stuff that runs good in your in you know stuff on Steam that's cheap and runs good. I do want to do some videos like that. And that Shadow Run series is really good. But uh, wow, even though that <laughs> you know what? No, I haven't. I had an Atari. I had an Atari Twenty Six Hundred. Was my was the was my last console. And I never really, and I never, I had Pong before that. I had Pong. I went from Pong. I'm 52 years old. I went from Pong, the original Pong, to a, an Atari 2600. And then from the, from the Atari 2600, I went to a Commodore. I went to a Commodore VIC-20 and then a Commodore 64. So... So yeah, the Atari 2600 the last uh, was the last console that I really got into. Now I've I had been I you know I've been to friends' house and I've played things like uh, a little bit on consoles since then, but it's not not anything I've owned. But no, I'm not familiar with. Uh, I'm not familiar with Snatcher.
Uh, but honestly, uh, one of the reasons is playing my, that I play a lot of retro games on this. Oh, Tomb Raider 2013. Forget it. It's not running on this Pentium. It almost, it was almost doable on the i5, but the i5 even had integrated graphics, so. Um. So this Pentium, but man, Fallout New Vegas is so much fun. And the, uh, the i5, um, Fallout New Vegas was doable on the i5 with integrated graphics, and I'd, I'll be playing the hell out of that when I get that, when I, if, the, if, uh, if parts ever become available again, if parts ever become available again and I can finish that tower... Uh, but yeah, there's just parts of uh, motherboards just are not available right now. It's ridiculous. <laughs> right? I was watching. I've been meaning to watch the Clone Wars, um, and I just haven't even really had time to do that. I got, um, I'm not, the, the, this new Disney Star Wars is a dumpster fire as far as I'm concerned. Huh. Interesting. Well, shell. I've been I've been on here for almost two hours. It's been really nice. It's been really nice chatting with you guys. The inter, uh, interactivity in the chat's a plus. That's for sure. Yeah, it doesn't. It's ridiculous. Disney Star Wars. But uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and end the stream. And I'll be back Thursday. And Saturday with more uh, Ultima 7 and it's looking like Sunday I'm almost actually it's not that Sunday I'll start to tackle um, Enchanter but thank you all for watching thanks thanks for the chat And uh, I'll be back Thursday. You guys have a good evening, and have a have a wonderful uh, have a wonderful tomorrow too while you're at it. And I'll see you Thursday if I don't pop up tomorrow with Shadow Run or something. It could happen. <laughs> Thank you.